I'll talk about palm oil, its composition, and uh, fatty acids in general to position palm oil with respect to other oils. Palm oil has become quite big business. Just look at the growth over the last 20 years from a um, mere 4, 12, 14 <coughs> million tons. It is now more than 60 million tons. And palm oil has become the largest vegetable oil uh, in production. For instance, uh, you see here it is at 50. Uh, this is old, so this has already increased. And about the third, one third of the vegetable oils produced is palm oil at the moment. Uh, in comparison with soybean oil, which is a major was the biggest oil, it has overtaken uh, soybean oil in about 2006. Why is it, oh sorry, here you have a comparison of uh, major crops. Uh, the vegetable oils have put it 160 million tons per annum. Uh, olive oil uh, which is, is, is very small in comparison. And this compares with wheat, rice, and corn, which is very big. Uh, and the oil seeds themselves, you saw in the previous slides, are about 450 million tons. Um, and oh, sizable figures. But if you look at how much crude mineral oil is being produced, uh, that is considerably more. Why has palm oil grown so much? Well, there is a growth of world population, but that cannot account for the growth of palm oil. Uh, there is, of course, when people get richer, they eat more fat, but uh, there is the biodiesel outlet, and uh, it has also uh, some sp uh, properties in that palm oil provides solid fat. And of course, which is very important, palm oil has a large yield per acre, hectare, and uh, is the cheapest oil to produce at the moment. But there is another reason. The feed industry, uh, that makes feed for chickens, etc., uh, determines how much meal you need, and because soybean are the biggest producers of, of meal, they determine the soybean uh, uh, demand and production. Then, independent from that, there are oil users, and they determine the total demand for oil. And if you add and deduct, then you have oil is provided by palm oil because it has no byproducts. So when oil demand outpaces meal demand, this means that you must make more palm oil. <coughs> if we look in history, you have edible fats by rendering olive oils and butter, but a shortage of butter led to the invention of margarine. And he used beef tallow to have a consistent fat then there was not enough beef tallow. So Norman started hydrogenation. And now we use solid fats for margarine from palm oil and its fractions. And the raw materials may require some modification, but it's still good. Now, what are fatty, as uh, fatty acids you have in the cis form and in the trans double bonds? I have drawn here a cis where you have two carbon atoms joined by a double bond and the chain is bent. Whereas here in the transform, the chain is just with a slight kink. This means that they have different physical properties and that translates to the different physical properties of the triglycerides. Sorry. No. Yeah, fatty acids in general are 
straight chains. Well, this doesn't look straight, but that's how you draw a straight chain when you are a chemist. Uh, you have a carboxyl end group at one end, a methyl group at the other end, and you may have double bonds, and they can be methylene interrupted, which is the normal way of going about it. There are cis and trans fatty acids. The elidinic acid is uh, a result of partial hydrogenation industrial, and the cows and other ruminants also hydrogenate their fats <laughs> and produce a wide range of fatty acids, trans fatty acids, and the list is not even complete. How do Sorry. Yeah. Uh, here we call have the list of fatty acids uh, where you have the s several saturated ones, monounsaturated ones, diunsaturated, polyunsaturated. Uh, that is how they, they work. And if I look at oils that occur in nature, then you have coconut oil, which has a lot of 12 C, it's a lauric acid, and palm kernel oil the same. Those are lauric oils. Palm oil is very strong, it's C16, palmitic acid, uh, hence the name. Uh, in cocoa butter, that is, uh, you have quite a lot of stearic acid. Olive oil is known for its high oleic acid content. Soybean oil and sunflower seed oil have a high content of 82 linoleic acid. Uh, linseed oil is a drying oil used in paint and varnishes and has a lot of linolenic acid and the old rapeseed oil ha was strong in erucic acid. So oils are very different. If I now concentrate on palm oil, then you see that uh, crude palm oil contains f usually a fair amount of free fatty acids, and uh, the fatty acid composition is shown as here. It has a melting point near body temperature, which is pleasant, uh, but uh, for certain applications, you need higher and lower melting uh, fractions. And you make these fractions as follows. You do this by a fractional crystallization. And that is, you partially crystallize the melt, and then you filter the resulting slurry. So you start with palm oil, and then you have a filter cake, you call that the stearine, and you have a filtrate, you call that the oleine. You can then cool down further, and then you have another filter cake, which you call the mid-fraction, and there you have the palm super oleine. And they differ in triglyceride composition. You, that's only to be expected. You see that the SSS, which is the high melting trisaturated triglyceride, you find 7% in palm oil, but in palm stearine, it's concentrated in there as the oleins have no high melting stearines. But on the other hand, the low melting one, you hardly find in the stearine, but it is concentrated in the lower, in the, uh, lower melting ones. Here, I have split it up in more detail, uh, where you see that the PPP, the tripalmatin, is in the palm oil 5.3%, concentrated in the stearine, absent in the oleins, and a lower melting one, SOO for instance, uh, you find more in, in this, but it is too high melting to come in that one, so it is enriched here. Where do we use palm oil? Uh, it can be used in, uh, as such uh, in cooking, uh, frying, and so forth. You can use the oleine 
which is then uh, liquid oil for salad dressing and also in cooking. The stearine, which is a high melting material, which you would not want to eat as such because it, it clings to the palate and it has an uh, unpleasant mouthfeel. Uh, but if you use it as a component in interestification mix mixtures, say with palm kernel oil, then uh, you can use it as a hard stock for margarine shortenings. And the palm mid fraction has a triglyceride composition that is similar to that of cocoa butter. So it is often used as, as filling fat in, in, uh, for confectionery applications. There are oleochemical uses. Uh, and then recently, there is the biofuel, where the uh, palm oil is transesterified with methanol to make fatty acid methyl esters, which then are mixed with uh, mineral diesel oil uh, to yeah, uh, drive a car or well. Okay, are there any, uh, uh, any questions? Thank you, Dr. Bistra. We have a small questions um, session after each speak. So if you have questions, that's, that's the moment. No biochemical questions, please. <laughs> <laughs> Chemical, technological, or whatever. That's, uh, Dr. Gistra, um, I'm just interested in the coconut, this is not palm oil, the coconut oil composition you showed. Yes. It was mainly C12, I think around 40%, and yet coconut oil has been, they claim that it has many good benefits from the short, shorter chain, C6 and C8 and C10. Which is very little. Uh, yes. On the medium chain fatty acids, uh, they, they also occur in uh, uh, palm kernel oil. Palm kernel oil and coconut oil are very similar in uh, fatty acid composition. Uh, uh, you see that they have both high percentage of lorix. Um, palm kernel oil is a bit more unsaturated. Uh, it has more 18-1 and, uh, uh, than, than coconut oil. In fact, palm kernel oil also has a confectionery application uh, in that it is also fractionated. And then you have a stearine, which has a low C18-1 content. And when you then hydrogenate that product, it has a low, that one will become saturated and become that. So it has a low C18 stearic acid co uh, content, which means that it has still a good mouthfeel and it has a sharp melting point, a short melting range and a good snap. So it is used uh, as a chocolate type coating for ice cream.